Problem 11.13. The acceleration of point A is defined by the relation acceleration equals negative 1.8 sine of kt, where acceleration is expressed in meters per second square and t is in seconds. Uh, k is given as 3 radians per second, and it's a constant. Uh, knowing that the position, when t equals 0, the position x equals 0 and velocity equals 0.6, determine the velocity and position of point 0.8 when time is 0.5. So it's actually giving us some boundary conditions, right? When t is 0, so before anything starts, the position is 0 and the velocity is 0.6. The other thing it gives us is a, an equation for acceleration. So what we can do is we, with this equation here and the boundary conditions, we can integrate this acceleration to get the uh, equation for the velocity. And then we can integrate once again the velocity to get the equation for the position. And with those uh, equations, we can solve for any any velocity in any position that we want. In this case, it wants specifically for t equals 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, so what is point A? This is point A over here. Let's have a look at what's going on there. Um, so apparently this guy here is allowing this fellow to move, but it moves like so, right? Think about this, the motion of this guy here, right around this, around point B. Okay, so when that happens, note what happens with uh, point C. Point C to be able to move um, that way is going to have to move on a circular motion. And then when that guy happens, so when this guy has to go to the side here, point A is moving like so, right? So if it's cyclical and going up and down, so likewise, if we're going upwards like that, then my point A is also going to be going this way. And if we're going from this point downwards, then my point A is going to be going that way. So point A is moving on the x direction and that's exactly what the position for x is telling us right so what we're trying to find is how this a is moving in um in this horizontal direction here back and forth and that's going to happen because obviously this will be allowed to move back and forth the whole thing right okay cool so all we need to do is go back to the fundamentals and we're going to see that okay let's start with uh, so acceleration and acceleration is how the velocity changes with time. So in our case here, we have an equation for acceleration, so that means that 1.8 sine of kt equals how velocity changes with time. So that means that um, dv equals minus 1.8 sine of kt dt. Right, so what we can do here from this point on is integrate on both sides, on both ends, and that's going to give us a relationship for the velocity, right? So here on the left-hand side, I'm going to be integrating from velocity v initial, v naught, to a final v that can be any v that I want. And on this side here, I'm going to integrate from zero, when this whole thing first starts, to a t, any t that I want. Okay, I could go ahead and do 0.5 there, straight off. And solve for 0.5, but I want to do t because I then end up with an equation for velocity that I can then apply to anything I want. <clears throat> on the left hand side, it's pretty straightforward, right? Velocity minus v naught. On the right, right hand side, however, uh, let's just make sure we get rid of this first because that's a constant, one point, negative 1.8. So negative 1.8 gets out, and then we're going to be left with the integral from 0 to t of the sine kt dt. And to integrate this, remember that we're going to have, uh, note that we have, we're going to be integrating the sine function, which is um, a function of dt, and we'll also have another function of dt inside, which is kt. Right? So we have, actually have to do the product rule. Uh, one way to solve this, a simple way to solve this is actually do substitution, right? So we can do the following. So let's just do a little, re little remember section here for how to solve this integral. Um, we have the following. Integral of sine of kt dt. What I'll do is I'll create a u function, okay? And this u function will be equal to kt, so I can sub that kt in there. S but to do that, I also need to have a du instead of dt, right? So what I do is I take the integral of that u function in respect to t. Sorry, the integral of the derivative in respect to t. And if you derive this, all we get is K, right? Constant K. So that means, so therefore, my du over my K equals my dt. 
Right, so what I can do now is I can sub in this into this equation that we had originally here. So the integral of sine of where I had kt, now I'm going to have u. And where I had dt, now I'm going to have du over k. Let's so actually put k in green here. Okay, so that means this is equal to k, because k is oops, divided 1 over k. Because k is a constant, right? Because k is 3. It's not changing. Um, integral of sine of u du. And this is just negative the cosine, right? So this is going to be negative the cosine of u divided by k. And in this case here, we're going from 0 to t, right? 0 to t, 0 to t, 0 to t, so 0 to t. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and apply this to our original one. So negative 1.8. We're going to have this multiplying negative the cosine of t, or kt, I should say, right? Because this is du. Uh, let me step back in. Where we had du, we're gonna, du equals to kt, so kt. Um, kt, negative, negative, so positive, the cosine of 0. And the whole thing has a k dividing. Cool, so I can take the k out of there if I want to, and this whole thing becomes, let's go to the right here, I guess. So therefore, velocity minus v naught velocity initial equals negative 1.8 divided by k uh, cosine is of 0 is 1 so I'm going to have the cosine of a uh, negative sorry, negative the cosine of kt uh, plus 1 okay so with that we can now apply the boundary condition because we know that our v naught in this case is 0.6, right? Because we know that we're applying t equals 0, remember? That's our first um, part of the integration on the time side. And when that's true, then our velocity equals 0 0.6, and the position equals 0. So I can, where we have v naught, I can put, put 0 0.6, I'm going to have the following v minus 0 0.6 equals. Mm, what else can I do? I can actually put this as 3, so I'm going to be dividing that, so I'm going to have 0. Point, so negative 0. 0.6 multiplying minus the cosine of kt, let's scroll to the side, of kt uh, plus 1. And you see where this is going, hopefully this is very convenient because this is v minus 0. 0.6 equals um, 0. 0.6 cosine, because negative goes away, of kt, um, negative 0 0.6. So both sides we have 0 0.6. So this means a velocity, and this is the velocity for any given point on this problem, is 0 0.6 cosine of kt. And so we have an equation, this equation here gives us the velocity at any time for this problem. If we want the velocity at, so let's put here, if t equals 0 0.5, which is what we're looking for, seconds, then velocity equals 0 0.6 times the cosine of 3 times 0 0.5. Note that this is um, inside the cosine, we're going to have seconds and then radians per second, so we're going to have just radians. And this turns out to be 0 0.0. .0 424. That's the velocity magnitude of the velocity when time equals 0 0.5. Okay, what else? Uh, position, right? So now we have an equation for the velocity. I'm actually going to copy this. I have an equation for the velocity, and I'm going to find one for the position. So what I'll do is back here, I'll paste this. And I'm going to rem remember that the velocity is just how positioning 
position is changing with in respect to time. Right? So velocity equals velocity. So all I need to do now is integrate this guy here in respect to time once again. Okay, so let's write that this down quickly. So dx equals 0 0.6 cosine of kt dt. And I'm integrating this from my position, my original position to my final position. And from my 0, I'm going to go ahead and do straight off now 0.5. I could do to t again and get a general equation for the position if I wanted to. But since I'm not going to have to do anything after this, I can just go ahead and do straight off 0.5. On the left hand side, pretty easy, x minus x naught. x naught is 0 if you guys remember, so we could eliminate that straight off now. And on the left hand side, I'm going to have 0 0.6, which is a constant. And I'll be going from 0 to 0.5 on the cosine of kt dt. Okay, so this integration now, we know the integral of the cosine is a sine, no negatives there. And once again, we're going to have to do the same thing, the same substitution thing, right? So if you do apply the same exact principle, we're going to once again get k dividing. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 0 0.6, okay, that multiplies the sine of kt divided by k minus the sine of kg divided by k. Uh, so in, on, in this case, uh, I should probably do it like so to make it one, one extra step to make more sense. So kt from 0 to 0.5. So x minus, remember that one time is 0, position is 0, so that goes away, equals 0 0.6 uh, multiplied sine. I can take that k out of there if I want to, so I can put the k over here. Uh, sine of k, let's leave it as k for now, I guess, k times 0 0.5. minus the sine of k times 0, which is 0. If you guys remember, sine of 0 is 0, so this goes away. And we're left with the position, so the position at, let's actually do this, at time equals 0 0.5 seconds, the position equals 0 0.6 divided by 3, so 0 0.2, multiplied by the sine of 3 over 2, or 3 times 0 0.5. And this turns out to be 101.995 meters, which is the same thing as 199.5 mils.